हेलो आपको आवाज आ रही है यस सर ओके यस सो लेट्स शेयर माय स्क्रीन यस सर ओके सो लेट मी शेयर माय फुल स्क्रीन विद यू पीपल ओके इफ यू गो टू यूर गूगल क्लास रूम एनी सेक्शन लेट से इट्स सेक्शन डी सो ऑन स्ट्रीम यू ऑलरेडी नो दैट यू कैन रिसीव माई मैसेजेस इवन इफ यू पुट सम मैसेज ओवर हेयर वी आई कैन रिसीव इट ओके इफ यू गो टू गूगल क्लास रूम क्लास वर्क सेक्शन ओके so the first portion that you will see on your walls it's basically the course content course uh, learning outcomes and evaluation criteria if you open it you will be able to see it so i will uh, teach this course to you people and the course content that we have it's kinematics of particle kinetic of particle then plane kinematics of rigid body and plane kinetics of rigid body so the books that we uh, can use for this course is basically factor mechanics for uh, engineers and the dynamics portion definitely by bear and johnson then engineering mechanics by jl meriam and rc hebler uh, and the dynamics portion of both these books but mostly we will focus on the last two books that is uh, dynamics by jl meriam and rc hebler okay the course learning outcome that we want to achieve uh, during this course or as a result of this course is also mentioned over here so we want to basically target four clos okay the general course evaluation criteria that we usually have uh, in our classes it may be different from online but at the moment we have this criteria that is uh, 20% sessional mid term will be 20% and final term will uh, be about 60% okay so if you go to timetable here the timetable is given okay so mostly we will follow this time table but uh, on consensus uh, it can be changed if required but at the moment we will follow exactly this one if we go to the recommended books so the two books that is uh, engineering mechanics dynamics portion by jl meriam and rc hebler 12th edition so the rc hebler book it basically consists of two portion uh, from chapter 1 to 11 it's related to statics and 12 onwards it's related to dynamics so this book uh is having all those chapters okay uh then if you go to lecture slides so uh here the first and second lecture uh they, that we will go through uh, is basically given over here means the lecture that we going or we are supposed to cover in first and second week is given over here so you can download it from here you can go to new window and then from here you can download it okay then uh in a while you will be able to see the video lecture portion lecture video recording so if i post any video over here you will uh, find it in this section then the related assignment and quizzes if any so it will be posted over here okay so let's go through our main uh, section now at the moment we are having about 30 students okay i am sharing screen with you people uh, a different screen not the complete one I hope uh, you are in a position to see the screen now. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, last time in uh, your second semester, we completed our first portion of engineering mechanics, which was basically statics. So now, what we are going to do after completion of that portion, we are moving towards the second portion, that is uh, dynamics. So the course that we have basically is engineering mechanics, and the code is two double one. 
the word code which start with two this means like uh, the course will be definitely included in the second year it's not mandatory but usually for third year you will be having three and for fourth year it will be uh, starting with four okay so i will teach this course uh, if you want to contact me for any sort of problem related to course or any other issue you can contact me on this email id this is my email id okay the textbook or the reference book that we can use for this uh, course uh, it is basically jl merriam and lg craig you can use any edition like the dynamic portion it can be fifth sixth um, or seventh edition so it's up to you whatever edition you uh, can easily find you can use it then we are in joston vector mechanics and again uh, the dynamic portion for this course then the shames engineering mechanics again the dynamic portion and you can use any edition but the one that i have it's fourth edition and then rc hibler so rc hibler dynamic portion means from 12 on onward chapters okay uh, in our course we will mainly focus uh, on these two books that is jl merriam and rc hibler maybe for reference or for few topics we 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 may touch other books but mostly if you have these two books so i think it would be enough for your course both these books are basically uploaded in your google classroom so you can download it from there if you want it in soft form okay uh, apart from the book uh, the solution manual may also be available at least that jl merriam book is having solution if you don't have let me know i will uh, give it to you people but if you can find then it's okay okay so as i have discussed the uh, course evaluation criteria so again it's given over here 20 sessional 20 mid and 20 final so the sessional can be further subdivided into your assignments into your class participation into your quizzes presentations and attendance and then mid term will be having 20% and final term will be of 60% okay mechanics uh, since we already covered these things so uh, we will not go into much detail but uh, we will uh, have a bird eye view on it so as we know that it's basically we can say the branch of science or engineering that deals with the action of forces on bodies or on particles okay so if if a number of forces are applied on an object so definitely it will be having some effect so in mechanics we are basically concerned with the effect the effect of forces now the effect of forces can result motion or it can result the state of rest or uh, equilibrium so if the effect of all forces causing the object state of rest means the effect of all forces are in such a way that the object is not moving from its place it is in state of rest so that will be uh, rest or we can say that that will be the like that uh, that will come under the umbrella of engineering statics but as a result of forces if we apply some forces or some forces have been applied on an object and as a result of that forces the object start moving there is motion in that object mean the effect of forces basically causing some motion then that will come under a section of dynamics so those things means when we have motion so so such cases will be covered in engineering dynamics so two things one forces have been applied but the state of object the state of body state of particle is rest this is the first one then the second one forces are applied and as a result of forces mean the effect of forces are basically producing some motion so then that will come towards the dynamics now in dynamics we can have two approaches one is known as kinetics one is known as kinematics so uh, for example the forces that we are applying on an object the forces that we are applying on an object it is causing some motion or we are interested in the motion only that whole sort of motion is created how much time does it takes how much acceleration do we have how, how much displacement it cover but we if we, we are not interested if we are not considering the forces which are causing those motion so such type or such cases will be considered as kinematics so we can define this kinematics that study of motion without reference to the force which basically causes the motion so this means this is basically relationship between velocity displacement and acceleration so the velocity can be linear velocity uh, acceleration can be linear 
similarly displacement can be linear and it can be like angular angular displacement angular velocity angular acceleration okay another case in which we are interested in the effect of forces as well as the forces which are basically causing those effects for example study of motion with reference to the force which causes the motion so in this case we we are interested between relationship between force or the torque which is causing motion so relationship between force torque and motion will be involved or in other words we can say it's the study of force or torque that is causing linear or uh, angular motion so usually newton uh, famous equation that is uh, second law of motion which, which comes from newton second law of motion that is f is equal to ma means force is directly proportional to the acceleration whenever some force is applied on an object and as a result of that force the acceleration produced in that object it will be directly proportional to the force applied and it will be in the direction of force so all uh, engineering dynamics is basically based on uh, that second newton second law of motion engineering dynamics means uh, initially all calculations were supposed to be made on the static portion people were considering the forces as static but then with the passage of time it was realized that no dynamic effect is having different mechanism it is having different effect so galileo for the very first time he started working on dynamics and it was like uh, you can say further uh, elaborated or further it can be concluded or the the, 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 the equation which, which were derived and which which are now the basis of uh, dynamics those those were basically that work was basically then done by newton but initially it was started by galileo so that's why uh, you you will see that newton equation in fluid mechanics you will see uh, it uh, in dynamics you will see the, those equation in your mechanics of materials okay so well, we can define based on the thing that we discussed that we can say mechanics is basically concerned with the state of rest or motion of bodies or particle but the condition is when they are subjected to um, number of forces or the action of forces again question arises that why we basically studied that engineering mechanics so if you, uh, i have shown some graphs uh, graphics over here some images over here if you consider the figure on the left side so here we are having that rocket that space shuttle so space shuttle what what we need to do we basically uh, need to send it uh, to the space and for that purpose it has to come out from earth gravitational field and it's not easy means earth will attract it towards its surface but it has to move in opposite direction and it has to overcome all those gravitational force okay so now those gravitational force how much how much force will be required to go out of that range and to reach to the space analysis of all those forces that that, that is basically covered in mechanics now this case involved basically static analysis as well as dynamic analysis because the object has to move it has to overcome the forces it has to go out now how much force should be produced by the rocket how much force should be produced how much thrust should be produced by the space shuttle so that the force uh, when the force is applied on the object when the force is applied on the earth the earth reaction basically pull or pushes the space shuttle in the opposite direction as a result the space shuttle moves upward as a result the space shuttle move upward and it goes out of the uh, earth pole so this involved both the static as well as dynamic analysis if you look at this uh, um, another diagram the one in the mid so again it's like uh, we are having some 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 wire we are having some ropes and it it is attached with the bridge it is giving support to the bridge so uh, as we have already studied a number of problem in statics so it's an another example of mechanics similarly the tightening of nut and bolt through wrench or through some other devices again it involved the application of mechanics uh we have already studied the friction like uh, how how friction uh, can play its role in braking mechanism in clutch mechanism of automobile uh, clutch mechanism of uh, your bikes in braking mechanism of your cycle bicycle so again uh it cannot be possible those analysis those design cannot be possible with the basic knowledge or with the proper knowledge of engineering mechanic then uh the automation section 
like the oh, in, in most of mechanical system if if you go toward automation so the first thing that we usually put is basically the conveyor belt so conveyor belt is basically make your work much much easier it it reduces a lot of labor work so the design of conveyor for bottling plant required again knowledge of the forces that act on them and the ability to predict the motion of bottles that transport because if if we if we design a path in such a way that doesn't that that do, doesn't confine that doesn't make those bottles stable for example the path is like this if we design this path randomly without considering the uh, forces involved in dynamics as well as in static so if we use this path so there might be some unbalanced forces which may cause this bottle to be dropped down from this lane or from this conveyor belt so the proper designing of this conveyor belt the proper path that we need to use for this again it required the knowledge of engineering mechanics so that's why it is very much important to to study the statics as well as dynamic portion okay so last time we studied the statics again why we need to move toward the dynamics so as i have discussed over here and if you consider any practical application it might be like some mechanical machinery it might be automobile engine so all those thing basically involve the moving component it basically involve the dynamic loading so that's why it's very very much important to go through those uh, dynamic portion or dynamic course okay again another example of that space shuttle then that robotic arm how to control its motion uh, again it 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 base required the basic knowledge of engineering dynamics as it involved the application of forces and also involved all those motions so of when dynamics is involved so the effect of forces basically change okay so uh, mechanics as as we have discussed what is mechanics it is the effect of forces and the effect of forces it can be either rest it can be either the dynamic uh, uh, i mean it can be either uh, result in rest condition or it can result in some motion so that that's what we are studying in our engineering mechanics course and one more thing what we are considering in this course we are considering that the bodies that we are considering they are basically rigid bodies rigid body mean the body on which if we apply force it doesn't produce any deformation it doesn't produce any change in shape or length so those bodies are basically considered as rigid bodies so in this course in statics and dynamics we are basically uh, studying mechanics of rigid bodies we are having another course in which we are basically studying the mechanics of deformable bodies so that that course is basically known as mechanics of material it it is also uh, included in your course so you 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 have i think you have studied that one portion of course and now you will be second studying the second portion okay then we can have mechanics of continuously deformable bodies and that portion is basically covered in fluid mechanics so how we can define that fluid fluid when we apply force on an object and the fluid con uh, and the object continuously deform so such object or such substance will be considered as fluid of uh, when when you apply force on a fluid it it doesn't basically give any resistance and it started deforming continuously so that's why uh, we covered the mechanics of uh, continuously deformable bodies in fluid mechanics course okay. what is rigid body as i have shown over here for example if this is in universe there is no rigid body ideally speaking there is no rigid body but for practical purpose how we can define that if the deformation produced in an object if it is negligible as compared to the overall size of object so in that case we will consider the object as Uh, rigid body so when no deformation under any load if this condition is fulfilled so this means we are having a rigid body so consider this object we are having this object and let let us consider these two point that is point o a if we apply some forces and the deformation produce or the change in length of this ao if it is negligible as compared to the overall dimension of this object so in this case this object will be considered as rigid body so simply the change in length the change in volume or the deformation produced in an object if it is negligible as compared to the overall size of that body overall size of that object so you what we will do we will consider that object as a rigid one 
okay so uh, again what is particle particle we, we we can define it as like an object of negligible dimension in a particle is usually having no dimension so again how how we can consider some object as particle so if object size doesn't have any impact on our calculation so in that case what we can do we can consider that object we can consider that body as a particle for example uh, if we consider the flight of an aircraft from peshawar to new york so now in that case if we are interested to find out that uh, the, the the flight from peshawar to new york how much time does it take and if if you want that flight to be completed within 16 or 18 hour so for that which tra trajectory the aircraft should load how much acceleration should be initially produced and then while landing how much deceleration should be produced and at what time steps so now all those calculation that that basically doesn't involve that basically doesn't involve uh, the the size of aircraft so means since we are in in, in in involved we we are interested in the, the, the that path analysis in motion analysis and we are not considering the object so now in that case we can consider the aircraft as a particle and second case means the size of aircraft as compared to the path from peshawar to new york it's almost negligible so we can consider that aircraft in that case as a particle but if you are doing stress analysis stress analysis of aircraft wing and in that case if we assume the aircraft as a particle of zero dimension so we know that stress is basically resistive force per unit area so the area is zero this means stress will be infinite so be, depending on the application you you can consider an object as a particle or you can consider it as a object of uh, some significant some definite size so uh, a combination of large number of particle in which all particle remain at fixed distance from one another before and after the application of load so uh, such case a such body will be basically called as particle so in case of particle we basically uh, do not consider material properties okay uh, initially i have given you some example like uh, the, the example of statics for example a person is sitting on chair forces have been applied so the effect of forces is in state of rest means the object is not moving from its place the chair is not moving from its place so this is like the case of statics now if you applied some more force and as a result of that force or result of those forces the chair start moving so that that will be uh, we mean uh, uh, that will be then the condition of dynamics okay so uh, then in uh, dynamics we can have kinematics and we can have kinetics so the example that i just gave you means the analysis uh, the path analysis or for example if you are interested that how much time aircraft will take if it takes off from peshawar and if it lands in uh, new york so if we are interested that how much acceleration will be produced in aircraft how much deceleration will be produced what trajectory will it follows uh, what path will it follows so now in this case we are not interested in the force which is basically causing those acceleration deceleration velocities and displacement so in this case we are only interested in the different types of motion that is created means if the velocity is increasing this means less time will be required if velocity is on lower side so this means bigger time will be required to reach to, till the destination okay now in another case for example if you consider this case now in this case what we, what we are required to do we need to weight this lift we need to lift this weight okay so for example we have this weight we have to carry this weight from here and take it till certain position so we are interested in this path we are interested in this distance in covering this distance now for this distance how much force will be required how much force the motor has to put how much capacity of motor will be required for this one now in this case we are interested in both the force required as well as the motion produced so this is the case of dynamics uh, the case of kinetics now samajh aa rahi hai aap logo ko are you getting my point yes sir yes sir yes sir okay if you are having any question in between so you can ask me yeah. directly yes sir okay so okay so uh, 
अगर आप खामोश रहते हैं कि आपको समझ आ रही है ओके सो डायनेमिक्स डायनेमिक्स में एस आई हैव टोल्ड यू इमेजिन ऑब्जेक्ट इनिशियली इज इन स्टेट ऑफ रेस्ट सो वेन यू अप्लाई सम फोर्स एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ दैट फोर्स वेलोसिटी हैज बीन प्रोड्यूस इन इन दैट ऑब्जेक्ट द ऑब्जेक्ट हैज स्टार्टेड मूविंग सो इनिशियली द वेलासिटी वॉज जीरो एंड नाउ द वेलासिटी इज चेंज सो चेंज इन वेलासिटी इज नाउन एज जी एनी वन वॉन्ट टू आंसर एक्सेलरेशन एक्सेलरेशन वेरी गुड ओके नाउ इमेजिन दैट ऑब्जेक्ट इज मूविंग एट अटन वेलासिटी एंड यू अप्लाई सम फोर्स ऑन इट सो ड्यू टू दैट फोर्स आई दर दिलासिटी विल बी डिक्रीज आई दर दिलासिटी विल बी इंक्रीज सो अगेन देर इज एक्सेलरेशन सो इन डायनेमिक एनालिसिस द एक्सेलेशन मीन देर इज ऑलवेज इन्वॉल्वमेंट ऑफ एक्सेलेशन और डिसलेशन सो समाइम वी डिफाइन दैट डायनेमिक as like the mechanics of accelerated bodies or in, we, we say that in dynamics we basically deal with the effect of forces on accelerated bodies okay so uh, now let's study some uh, again let's go through some basic fundamental concept we have we have already studied so uh, i will just uh, quickly go through it space we already know that is the geometric region occupied by bodies and uh, to identify any point in space what we need for it we basically we need some uh, coordinate system for it so the coordinate system it can be cartesian coordinate system means if we are having 3d 3d space and if you want to locate some point in it so we need three variable x y and z if you are having 2d space so we will required x z x y y z or y uh, means x z x y y z or x y uh these the any of these coordinate are we uh means in case of 2d one of the variable will, will be reduced okay then we can have polar coordinates so in polar coordinates we will be having one radial distance and we will be having one angle that is r theta then we can have cylindrical coordinate in which we'll be having r theta and one linear distance that will be z so here instead of r we have used this row instead of theta we have used phi and instead of uh, linear distance we have used z for sphere spherical we'll be having one radial distance and two angular distance that is theta and phi so we have already discussed these things uh, in our study school so i think uh, we should not go into much detail so here are the few application of spherical coordinate system then the cylindrical coordinate system for example if this is origin this is the radius this is the angle so Rho, phi, the, the, this become like the two variables. If you consider only this one, so this will be polar coordinate. But if we give give it one more variable, if we consider one more variable, if we consider it as a linear distance, it will become a uh, cylindrical coordinate system. So let's see if it is z, this will become cylindrical coordinate. For example, if you want to locate this position, so how we can go? till this position if we are having x y and z coordinate so we will cover some x distance then y distance and then z distance to reach till this point okay now in uh, cylindrical coordinate we will cover this r then this angle and then this linear distance so for this point we need to give value of three thing that is r theta and z or another uh, if you if you change the variable means if you can use like uh, some other name for r for theta for z we can use a b and z a b and c so here for radius we have used rho for angle we have used phi and for linear dimension we have used z so where it can be used one of the application for cylindrical coordinate can be physical phenomena with spherical symmetry for example water flow in a circular pipe this is one of the application this means for analysis of water flow in a circular pipe you can use this coordinate you can also use cartesian coordinate x y z but in that case the calculation will become a uh, little bit difficult not little bit it will become too much difficult it will be complicated okay then what is time we already know that is the meyer of succession of events or we can say it's the period between any two events and uh, it's again basic quantity or which is also known as dimension mass is the quantity of matter within a body or we can say it's the meyer of inertia again it's basic quantity and we are having unit for it in both the units uh unit system that is si system as well as foot mount system force 
Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, जो जो अभी कमेंट कर रहे हैं सो मे बी एट द एंड ऑफ क्लास ठीक है आपके साथ फिर मैं सेपरेट डिस्कशन करूंगा आई डोंट वांट दिस टू बी पार्ट ऑफ रिकॉर्डिंग ओके सो फोर्स इट इज बेसिकली एन एजेंट दैट बेसिकली ट्राई टू प्रोड्यूस पोशन आर दैट बेसिकली प्रोड्यूस सो फोर्स क्या है इट इज एन एजेंट दैट प्रोड्यूस आर टेंट टू प्रोड्यूस आर ट्राई टू प्रोड्यूस आर दैट स्टॉप आर टेंट टू स्टॉप मोशन ऑफ एन ऑब्जेक्ट so as we already know force is basically a vector and for vector two things are required magnitude as well as direction so that's why uh, to to characterize that's why to to means to show the effect that's why to analyze force we, we need those two things that is magnitude as well as direction and we also know that the point of application is also having impact so for complete characterization of force we need magnitude direction as well as the point of application of force okay then uh, how we can derive its dimension so di dimension for force is basically ml by t square and it can have like if uh, application anywhere for example uh, the gravitational field electromagnetic field or the interaction in those field forces are basically involved okay we we discuss mass and uh, what is weight so we already know what is weight weight basically refers to a gravitational attraction on a body and we know that uh, mass doesn't change with altitude or with latitude means if you change the location of body the mass will remain same however the weight of object can be changed with the location because uh, it involves the value of g w is equal to mg so if g change this means uh, the the weight of object can also be changed particle we have already discussed that a particle a body with mass but with negligible dimension so we need to consider in case of particle if we consider any object as particle so we will consider it mass but we will not consider its size so size of earth insignificant compared to the size of its orbit means for example if you are doing uh, orbital motion analysis uh, of earth around sun so now in that case the size of earth is insignificant means it is in it is negligible as compared to the size of its path so earth can be modeled as a particle when studying its orbital motion so uh, sometimes for simplification of analysis if if the size of object is not having impact on the whole analysis or if it the size of object is much much small or negligible as compared to the overall size of object or uh, the the size of path that we follow in the analysis so in that case object can be considered as a particle we have already discussed this thing a uh, few minutes ago then concentrated force so means uh, in that case the area over which the load is applied or the force is applied if it is very very small as compared to the overall size of the object so in that case the force will be known as concentrated force so concentrated force can be line load it can be point load and you you are already aware about it so we we studied this thing like in much detail in our mechanics of particle force since you you already been to that course so you already know about this thing but uh, just to mention that it is basically the load if the area over which the load is applied if it is very very small or it is uh, it is negligible it is of negligible dimension as compared to the overall size of object then in that case uh, we can consider the load or the force as a concentrated force or concentrated load okay then the basis of frigid body statics so static is basically based on the first law of uh, newton first law of motion means if an object is in state of rest it will remain in state of rest forever if object in a state of motion it will remain in state of motion forever unless some external force doesn't change its position okay so principle of force equilibrium that that is basically like the the, the basis for static whereas for dynamics we have already discussed that the second law it form the basis for uh, dynamics means a particle of mass m acted upon by unbalanced force f experience an acceleration a that has the same direction 
as the force and magnitude that is directly proportional to the force. In F is directly proportional to A. And to remove that constant of proportionality, F is equal to constant A. To put that constant of proportionality here, we use M, mass of an object. So F is equal to MA, which is the famous equation that we use. Third law. Third law is used in both statics as well as in dynamics. In the mutual force of action and reaction between two particles are equal, opposite, and collinear. So how it can be used in static? For example, if I give you again the example of chair. So uh, some forces has been applied by the object. I mean, the person who is sitting on the chair, he is applying some force on the chair. The chair or the earth or the surface is also applying some reactive forces uh, on the object. Means if I consider this diagram, in the object is that means the person is applying some force on this chair. These forces have been transmitted towards the earth or the surface. The surface as the reaction is also applying some force on this chair and under the action of this the, these forces that is action force and reaction force the object is in state of rest. So uh, this means that third law is applicable in both statics as well as in dynamics. How it's applicable in dynamics, as I have given you example of space uh, shuttle or that rocket. Gravitational attraction between any two particles. So we have already said this law that the force of attraction between any two objects or any two masses in the universe, it is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of distance between them. Means F is directly proportional to M1, M2, and it is inversely proportional to square of distance between them. So if we have... Um, a product having mass 1, another product mass m2 and distance between their centers is r. So we will get this equation. F is directly proportional to m1, m2 and it is inversely proportional to r square. To remove this, uh, uh, this proportionality sign, we need to put constant of proportionality, which is in this case g, 6.67 times power minus 11. Okay. Uh, imagine we are having an object on surface of earth this is this is earth this is a mass on surface of earth let's say the distance between the center of object and the center of earth let it be r so according to that equation if the mass of this object is small m and the mass of earth is me so according to uh, law of gravitation the force of attraction between these two it will be basically f is equal to g M M E divided by R square. So what is weight? It is basically the, the, the pull with which earth at, attract the body towards its center. So uh, that the force of attraction basically equal to the weight of body. So now in this case, the mass of earth remain constant. The value of G is also constant. The radius of earth is constant. But this, this R means if we put object of bigger volume, so then this R can be changed. Means the radius of person on surface of her, it can be changed. But that change in radius, it is almost negligible as compared to the radius of earth. Because if you have placed an object on surface of earth that is having 3 meter diameter, or, uh, so the, the radius will be 1.5 meter. If you put another object that is having 2 meter radius, so just 0 0.5 meter, which is negligible as compared to the radius of earth, which is much, much, much bigger. So that's why what we consider, we consider this distance between the center of object and center of earth also as constant. So if this is constant, this is constant, this is constant. So when you combine all those, it will give you some constant value. And we give that constant the name of G, which is known as gravitational acceleration. So whereas the mass of object can change, means you, you can change this object. If another object is placed on this that is having different mass, so the pull from Earth, it will be changed. So W is equal to mg. If the mass is increased, the weight, the, 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 the pull with which it attract the body, it will also be changed. Now, the acceptable value for G is 9.81, which we have used in our static calculation, in our previous uh, force calculation. Now, usually while calculating the value of G, it is. It was assumed. Usually, it, it it used to be assumed that Earth as well as the object both are in state of rest. So, if you do such type of analysis, in this case, the value of G will be little bigger. But we know 
for practical scenario or in actual case earth is revolving around its orbit as well as around the sun so this means earth is not in state of rest it is having some motion continuous motion so if you consider that motion if you consider that relative force of attraction between earth uh, we mean the the, the the relative force of attraction with which earth attract the object toward its surface so now in that case the value of g will be little bit on the lower side okay so the value 9.81 which we have used in our previous calculation that has already incorporated the rotation of earth so in g earth's rotation is already considered it is already taken into account so means g is equal to 9.81 it is an acceptable value you can use it okay then units uh, so, uh, we are having si system we are having foot pound system both can be used in mechanics in statics as well as in dynamics so we have already gone through these things but uh, again we can have bird eye view of it so for mass the dimension symbol is m for length it is l for time it is t and for force it is f but uh, among these the mass length time are basic quantity whereas force is derived quantity how we can find out the unit so from mass and acceleration we can find out the the unit we can derive the unit of force which is newton and usually it is equal to kilogram meter per second square okay in us customary unit uh, for mass we will be having slug for length we will have we having foot and for time we will be having second okay you can you can convert those units for example over here we have conversion means that 1 1 foot pound is equal to 4.45 uh, newton similarly uh, 32.2 lb foot is equal to 143.2 newton similarly for example if we are having 1 meter that is equal to 3.28 feet or 1 feet is equal to 0.305 meter so based on this if you want to convert mass from kg into slug or from slugs into kg so that conversion can also be done over here and slug is basically equal to lb second square per foot so instead of newton you have to put lb instead of meter you have to put foot so when you put all those value over here what you will get you will get one slug is equal to 14.5945 kg i hope that you will be in a position to get this thing for example mass slug wlb and g will be in foot per second square okay sometimes uh, in our engineering calculation if the value is very much bigger or if it is very much small so we use the prefixes for example kilo giga mega something like this and if it is very small so we use like micro which is stands for minus 6 nano times for minus 9 milli times for minus 3 so uh, th those are basically the the prefixes that we use and the symbol that we use basically for it for giga we use g for mega we use capital m for kilo we use k for uh, milli we use small m for micro we use this nu and for nano we use small n again uh, the the, the the digits that we use are the significant digits that we 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 need to use in our calculation it depend on the application that we are basically uh, doing our force analysis are where uh, what what sort of application do we have for example if, if we are in civil engineering construction so in that case okay give me a minute kindly
okay sorry there was some uh, connection problem so let's start it again okay so if you are working in uh, civil industry if civil construction industry so in that case like uh if you if you devi deviate your dimension by a millimeter so it may not be having a bigger impact but if you are working with integrated circuit like ic's that is used in your electronic devices or in your computers or in your laptops in your mobiles so in that case one mm deviation it can be like a disaster similarly if you are having uh, mechanical machinery you are making some component for assembly and if you are having one mm deviation in it so in that case again it can be a bigger problem so the significant digits that we need to use it depends on the application what sort of application uh, we have at the moment i uh, mean at that moment okay then the scalars and vectors so we know both are physical quantities and we already have discussed it in our uh, previous course so just to uh, just for your revision paper uh, uh, just for revision of your uh, you people i have mentioned both these things over here so you can go through it how we can represent it and uh, how we can calculate it what are the different types of vectors so we can have like fixed vector we can have sliding vector we can have free vectors and uh, in fixed vector it depends on point of application the sliding vector it doesn't depend on point of application of vector but it depends on line of application of vector whereas free vector it doesn't depend on point of application of vector as well as line of application of vector it can be applied anywhere okay we can add vector for example if you are having two vectors how we can add how we can subtract uh, we are having different laws for it head to tail root parallelogram law and then we have resolution of vectors method so we can use any of the, those method we have already discussed those thing in very much detail in our static course so uh, just for you people i have uh, re mentioned it over here the trigonometric ratios that we use the sine law the cosine laws the different laws that we use so you can see it over here this is just for uh, revision of you people okay so till this point if you are having any question you can ask me ji question hai koi yahan tak no sir no sir no sir no sir